Hello everyone and welcome to X-Plane 11. It's a sunny day here at Bristol Airport. And in front of us we've got the default King Air C90 that comes with X-Plane and we have a rather full car park which I guess may not be quite so full at the moment. And what I want to do today is to revisit the video I did, I think it's over a year ago now, on tips and tricks for the King Air autopilot. And there's a few reasons for doing this. Um, one is that, you know, simulators moved on a bit. There's been newer releases since then. The 1150s in beta, and that's what's currently running here. The C90s had some improvements. It's had some improved modeling um, for fuel systems, and it's got better sounds. Um, autopilot, I'm not sure if that's changed much, but it's worthwhile you know, revisiting how it works now. Second thing is that I think I've kind of learned a bit since I did those videos and um, some of the maybe techniques I came up with for sort of pre-selecting climbs and speeds and things before departure, I don't think that's really the right way to do it. I think the right way to do it is to take off, obviously manually, get your airplane uh, trimmed nicely, get it at the climb rate you want, the speed you want, then think about the autopilot and uh, initially just put it in the default mode where it holds your roll and your pitch but we'll come to that when we, when we um when we get when we get going so this um I've done I've made this in two parts this part is going to be a sort of tutorial on startup and the autopilot um keyboard bindings and views and so on and and then we'll do a standard instrument departure on the GPS, uh, the kind of thing you'd do on, say, uh, IFR flight on that sim. We have to follow a SID, and we'll, we'll use the autopilot to do that. And then part two is going to be change location. It's in Shetland. Um, it's going to be using more of the autopilot modes and include uh, a landing, ILS. So I think we'll jump into the cockpit and we'll kind of just take this step by step in terms of what we look at. Um, and let me just turn my head tracking on ready in case I need it. Okay, so we're cold and dark. This is what you get if you select the plane without the engines running. And it, it's not like some of the add-on planes in that it remembers your your settings you had when you turned it off, it seems to reset that, reset to everything everything off. So everything's off, which is good in a way. Um, so we can go through the sort of start procedures. Um, the first thing to do is turn on the battery. Uh, well, actually, no. The first thing to do is make sure the handbrake is set. Handbrake's down here, which makes the parking brake. I keep calling it handbrake. Uh, parking brake. Make sure that's on. Turn on the battery. And we want to start the engines. Before we start the engines, let's just put the fuel transfer pumps to auto. Now the transfer pumps are just used, I think, when you've got a pump on one side failing so the fuel can be transferred from the other side. But if you just leave them on auto, I think that pretty much takes care of it. You want these boost pumps on for start. The boost pumps um, help the engine-driven pumps to move fuel. Um, is it from the nacelle tanks to the engine or from the aux tanks? I'm not quite sure. If you read up on the the fuel system of the King Air, you can find various articles online, it's quite interesting. Um, but basically, you turn these boost pumps on to help the engine driven pumps. Leave them on until you're about to, to shut down. I think that's the right way to do it. Um, beacon light will turn on before start. Now, we're clear. I'm going to start the right engine. I'm going to turn on the starter, ignition and starter switch here, which will do two things. It will turn on it will turn use use the generator start to start spinning the engine and it will also start the igniter to ignite the fuel. I'm not sure whether it starts ignited straight away or it waits for a certain RPM, but anyway. Um but before we do that, let's let's check our levers. So prop lever, full forward. Um throttle should be at idle. And um fuel cutoff levers should be cut off. I've got one lever mapped to, to both of them, so when it comes to the point to introduce fuel, I'll move it forward, but then I'll just pull the left one back manually, so we've just got the right one. Um, otherwise, if I leave it at idle, then I find at uh, cutoff, then I find that um, I start the engine using the mouse, and then I go to move the thing, and it goes back to cutoff, and the engine stops. So anyway, let's see how we get on. So um, right engine starter on, 
we're watching for the uh, our percent RPM here on the turbine to come up to about 13% and then we can introduce fuel uh, so I'm now going to introduce fuel to low idle and what you should see now is the temperature ITT temperature inside the turbine come up there's two red lines this is the normal one and this is the start one so as long as it doesn't go above the start red line I think we're okay it should then start to fall back indicating that the fuel snow you know being about we're getting air flow through the engine as it's speeding up when the turbine's over about 50 percent we can turn off the uh, starter we can turn on the right generator I think you need to press move to move it to reset then back to on not quite sure but we'll do that anyway um, means we're now charging the battery now we'll also turn on turn on the inverter it doesn't matter which inverter you turn on it just gives you AC power for bits of the plane that need it and I think here we can go high idle um, I haven't moved my lever forward I've done it the other way so let's just before I forget we go high idle to increase the generator output. We're going to use a generator kind of assisted start on the left engine. Um, but uh, opinion seems to vary if you read up on this as to whether you can leave the uh, right generator on what completely while you're starting the left engine. It might depend on which model of King Air you've got and, and so on. Um, but the th seems to be the worry seems to be that you might overload the generator if you try and do a cold start on the second engine with the other generator on. I'm not sure if that would actually happen because in theory the battery is going to be a, a lower impedance uh, supply, so it, you would expect the current that you need to turn the starter to mainly come from the battery. But anyway, I think what we'll do is try and follow the kind of assist procedure where you um, you turn off the generator. Uh, and you s turn on the starter for the left engine, which we'll do now. Once the turbine RPM has come up to about 13%, then you can turn back on the right generator because the initial big current draw is gone. Then you introduce fuel for the left engine. And again, we watch the ITT. If it did go up right up to the red line here, we'd have to be ready to pull the fuel back. But it's seems to be coming back nicely and the turbine RPM speeding up and again we're over 50% so I'm going to turn off the left starter and left generator can go on let's get rid of the master caution let's get I don't think you need to be at high idle anymore so we'll bring you back we can turn our bleeds on there as it's a hot day and we might want some air in the cabin um, we'll put the rest of the lights on in a minute. We need now to get some avionics going. So you've got avionics master power here. And you've got these instruments here, your HSI and so on, are turned on separately down here um, where you've got EFIS power. So if we turn that on. The other thing we'll turn on here is rudder boost and elevator trim and that makes the electric trim work which is so you've got a trim wheel here um, and usually you'll have a binding on joystick or your yoke so that there's like a, a thumb switch to move the trim like this um, which you need. Um, if you forget to turn this on then nothing happens and you want and the autopilot also won't work because the autopilot relies on the electric trim so most important make sure you have this trim switch turned on uh, I think we're uh, basically up and up and running now um, let's uh, so I, as I say the scenario here is that we're going to do uh, so I'm just going to clear the I've got a flight plan in there already I am just going to go menu and I'm going to delete this flight plan for now uh, okay, the scenario here is that we're going to just do a standard instrument departure from Bristol. So let's take a look at Avitab and see what the weather's doing. And we'll get some charts up. Okay, um, okay, the we have got the wind basically from the east. Uh, so we we'll probably want runway runway nine, I think it is. Let's have a look. Let's get some charts. 
Um, so, so we are actually completely at uh, the wrong end of the runway, but that's okay. Um, ooh, I wonder if we can go that way. We could probably taxi H. Um, right. So runway nine. So this is where we come to our first use of kind of some keyboard bindings and and the autopilot. So runway nine is 87 degrees heading. So what we really want to do is set a heading bug here to 87 degrees. How do we do that? Well, a heading bug turner is down here on the autopilot panel. Not very convenient. How do you see the heading bug whilst you're turning it? You kind of got to do this and it's a bit awkward. So let's come to the first point here is um, autopilot being visible. Now, um, what I recommend in, uh, anyway is to have one of your, your custom views bound to the autopilot. In my case, if I press 2 on my numeric keyboard, uh, I've got autopilot view. And, and while we're here, I'm going to turn the flight director on. Um, so to set up a custom view, you basically manipulate the view um, to where you want it using you can use R you can use mouse you can use arrow keys you can use R and F to rotate the view and then you can zoom in and by a kind of combination of these things you can get to a view that you want and then press control and then the number you want so if you want to put it on position two like I've got you can do control two. Uh, and that gets you a view you can switch back to. But that doesn't really help with the heading sync because we still can't see the um, the dial, uh, the display, whilst we're turning it. So a couple of things we can do. Um, let's start with one of the easy ones. Uh, up here on the left, underneath the frame rates, you'll see I've got another set of readouts. Uh, and this is autopilot data. So we've got the speed that's set for indicated airspeed. We've got the heading. We've got the vertical speed. Heading's the, the one that we kind of want. That matches the heading here. To get this thing up, you and I covered this in the er earlier video I did, but I will just revisit it quickly. You go to your settings, you go data output, you search in here for autopilot and you see autopilot values here just tick showing cockpit got that up here and if you turn the heading um, knob if we do that now you'll see that that's not the heading knob uh, this is why it's kind of awkward you see there that the heading um, readout is changing okay but easier than that is keyboard bindings now, um, you may remember in, uh, uh, if you've seen the previous video that I, I've got some keyboard bindings for the autopilot and I've stuck with those and they've proven, at least I find them, very useful. They're new, improved now um, with the uh, use of some sellotape and some cut up post-it notes. Um, I'm kind of always jealous of if you watch people flying the um, bigger aircraft like the 737, Zebra Mod or the Airbuses, they have a nice autopilot up here and it has, um, you know, like a uh, course and heading knobs with all nice little graphics on them. So I thought, well, I'll kind of replicate that with my, my sticky notes. So essentially, starting with these group of keys here, this is a heading, this is heading. And uh, this is heading plus, this is heading minus. This is uh, nav one course plus minus, nav two course plus minus. This is turn on the yaw down input, and this is turn on the autopilot. These are the kind of important ones after takeoff. You can just press these without looking down or anything to get the autopilot to come on. This is autopilot disconnect, so when you want to turn it off again. And I haven't labeled these two, but I use the plus minus keys for. Um, increasing vert and decreasing vertical speed when you're in vertical speed mode. And this set of keys, as I say, I found very, very useful. Now, I will put in the description the um, command refs that you need to bind the keys to, but I'll just show you um, one of them as an example. So let's imagine we want to bind the insert and delete keys uh, to heading. So what we'll do, we will go settings and we will go keyboard and um, now you could if you haven't got anything bound already as I say I'll put the commands uh, so if I see if I can remember what it is you can just search in here so you can search so here you go autopilot heading down is the delete key and autopilot heading up 
is the insert key and if you want to change it you just click in here and you click the key that you want so I will put the bindings I use for all those keys um, in the description of the video okay so with that in mind I'm now going to use the keyboard keys to change my heading to runway heading heading back to runway heading 87 degrees and here's another advantage of having the data up here um, it's quite hard to see without zooming in on here when you're exactly at 87 degrees but with the the readout up there you don't even need to zoom in you can just kind of use the um, data readout and you can see now we're on an 87 degrees heading um, let's turn this thing on DME I'm not sure what we won't be using that so we're not going to use them um, let's have a look at our, our departure um, get some more charts up uh, departure I'm going to depart I uh, assume we're going to fly north so that's the Brecon departure is taking north um, we're on we're having to fly uh, runway 08 because of the wind so it'll be the Brecon 1 Zulu departure which means essentially we fly out here at runway heading to about 4 miles from the field and make a left turn to head across the Bristol Channel uh, towards Wales um, so there and I say you could tune in the nav radios here um, and use them as a backup but I'm not going to bother on this case you, pr you should do that normally uh, I'm just going to use GPS so let's go over here and we'll go flight plan which we're already on and um, we have our starting point here Bristol Airport we will go procedure and we will select departure and it was Brecon 1 Zulu and we will load the procedure now wonder why it's got runways wonder why it hasn't got runway 09 as the starting point hmm. sometimes the GPS can be a bit funny about the initial track or the initial fix I'm guessing it thinks we're already at runway 09 so we're probably okay uh, I'm just going to press the clear button hold down the clear button and you get back to the default view which shows you your, uh, graphically your course and also the flight director here the magenta thing will show us um, whether we need to turn climb or descend so we'll be using that initially on takeoff before we've engaged the autopilot um, we want to set our altimeter so let's check what that is. That's one zero one three. So standard, standard pressure today. Uh, so let's get that back to one zero one three, and we should do the same thing on the co-pilot side. Have I got a key binding? Yes, I kind of do. Uh, oh yeah, that's way off. Uh, one zero one three. Go. Okay. Right, um, we are basically ready to taxi. So we uh, let's go back to the airport diagram. Yeah, so we want to turn out of here, reverse out of here, and then um, H. Before we taxi, let's get some more lights on. We'll put an avian recognition lights on. We are going to turn auto feather on. Now, there's a couple of things here that you need to turn on and off before and after departure. There's prop sync here and there's auto feather here. I recommend binding if you've got them joystick buttons to these. So I'm going to turn auto. I'm going to arm auto feather and I'm going to make sure the prop sync's off. Um, we'll turn our pitot heat on. We've got bleed air on. Um, we're going to turn the taxi light on. Again, I've got. a uh, throttle quadrant thing button binding for that for uh, taxi and strobe and um, landing lights okay uh, I think we are good we've got GPS ah yeah we want to make sure that okay so yeah a couple more things so first of all we should turn on our transponder um, we'll just put it to on for now and put it to alt when we get to um, the runway holding point we want to make sure that the navigation system, yeah, autopilot, is set to follow the GPS and not set to follow the nav radios, which it is at the moment. So if you see here on the GPS, it says VLOC. That means it's using the nav radios. If we press CDI, 
changes to GPS, uh, which now means that we're, and it says RNAV1 here, that means that uh, the autopilot, if you put it in nav mode, it's going to follow the GPS. So make sure that's selected if you're using the GPS departure. Um, we will just uh, turn on head tracking for a bit here to um, whilst we're taxiing. Now, are we going to turn right or are we going to turn left? Let's make a left turn. So we're just going to got taxi light on. I think we're good to go. I'm just going to remove the brake. And without doing anything, the aircraft will start to move. There's sufficient thrust at idle for it to move very slowly. And we can give it a little bit more throttle just to get it going. Again, this is with the condition levers at low idle, which is where you'd normally have them, unless it's what well, I guess very hot and you need a lot more aircon or some other reason. Now, while we're taxiing um, on the King Air, you can do things like check um, prop prop feathering, and also that will help get um, oil through the prop pitch change mechanism. So I'm going to pull the prop levers right back. And you should see the props start to feather and push them forward again. Hopefully they come back. Now have we already missed our turning point? I think I have gone the wrong way here, so we're gonna have to backtrack the whole way down the runway. Okay, let's not worry about that too much. Let's just stop here and assume we've been cleared until here. Now stop here, I'm gonna put the parking brake on. I'm going to just run the engine, just do an engine power check, so we're just going to run up to 1800 RPM here. You see the auto feather system. Oops, that was 1800 on the props, so I was meant to go to not 1800 on anywhere else. We're just, the auto feather starts to work once you reach a certain um, torque, or uh, N1, it's either M1 or torque, I can't remember which, uh, so it's ready um, on departure if you have an engine failure to feather it and reduce drag. We're just going to exercise the props again here just to make sure everything's okay. All seems fine, so let's uh, assume we're going to backtrack down the runway. So what we need here is we need our strobe on, taxi uh, landing lights on, taxi off, and we will change this to ALT. Um, pitch trim, um, yeah, is good for takeoff. Slightly, slightly up, and flaps are up. Let's go. Um, let's get down that runway. Yeah, I think I, don't, I have taxied the wrong way here, but. Um, Check the runway's clear. Even if we had taxied the correct way there, um, it wouldn't have saved much. We've still got to kind of backtrack. So, uh, well, I suppose we could. We c I suppose we, we should really have carried on up here rather than using the runway. Um, but as we're just doing a practice flight today and the airport's quiet, I'm just going to backtrack down the runway. Don't do this at home. Beautiful day here today. So, looking at our engine instruments, oil pressure looks good, oil temperature looks good, fuel flow is equal in the engines. Props are fully forward. You don't have to worry about mixture, which is one nice thing on a, a turbine engine. So we're going to turn round. Then we're going to take off and we're going to fly runway heading, which is what the SID pretty much tells us to do. We'll, you know, we'll pull back. We'll get to maybe between five and ten degrees. Um, nose up pitch we'll get the props just pulled back a little bit power set we'll do all of that manually and um, no and then and when we're ready we'll turn the autopilot on and it will 
default to the pitch and roll hold mode. So let's just explain in a second. Let's just turn around. And we just stop here for one second. So yeah, if you look at the autopilot at the moment, it is not turned on. It's completely dead. The flight director's on, nothing else is on. No mode selected, no speed pre-selected, nothing like that to worry about. Um, let's just turn head tracking off for now. Okay, we are ready to go. So I'm going to advance the power. What uh, I think we're limited by ITT. So let's just make sure we stay below the ITT red line. There we go, it's about there. Where air speed's coming alive. Again, engine gauges look okay. 80 knots, we're going to rotate about 90 ish. Let's pull back smoothly. And gear is coming up. Interestingly enough, the flight director hasn't told us to climb yet, but um, actually I'm just going to put head tracking back on so I can see where we're going. Right, um, and now I'm going to pull back the prop RPM to 2100 just to reduce noise and also to lower it a bit. And I'm going to pull back the torque because I don't want to be doing too fast yet. Um, flight director isn't really. I was expecting the magenta line to be up a bit higher than that. Ah, it's because we haven't pre-selected our altitude. Whoops. Okay. Let's get that done. Let's say we've been cleared to 4,000. Um, push the button in and it goes in hundreds. Pull it out and it goes in thousands. Okay. So we're cleared to 4,000. Oh, that doesn't actually affect the flight director either. It's probably because we're not on an alt select mode. Um, right. We, s we are following the SID here. Um, let's say we're now happy that we're stable, we're at a nice stable speed, nice stable rate of climb. I'm going to press your damper and autopilot keys. We look down here, the autopilot is now on in its basic mode. Um, you'll see AP here, and that's it. Now, we've got a turn coming up soon, so let's go to nav mode. Here to nav mode. The autopilot will now make sure it's following the magenta track. Again, we haven't we haven't done anything about our vertical speed yet. We we we're cleared to 4,000, so let's alt sell for 4,000. If we don't alt sell, then we'll just keep at this climb rate forever. The autopilot's got us back on track, and. That's telling us we're within a thousand feet of four thousand. Autopilot's starting a turn for us. There's Bristol. Um, we've got plenty of time now. We can um, we can make a radio calls. We can turn off the landing lights. Uh, we can turn off auto feather, and we can turn on prop sync. And looks like we're following the SID nicely. Now let's get to let's get to four thousand. At four thousand, we're going to level off, so we're going to speed up. And there's the Bristol Channel, so we're now heading over here to Brecon. Yeah, try and remember to set you. Well, when you when you were talking to ATC, you had been given an initial cleared altitude. Um, if we look on here you can see it's kind of between up to 6,000 basically so that's why I kind of picked 4,000 but um, we've now leveled off so um, our speed's gonna start increasing and what we can do now let's assume now that we've now been cleared to go to up to 6,000 so we set our new, our new level to 6,000 And the two ways we could get to 6,000, we could tell the autopilot to use IAS mode or VS mode. IAS mode will keep your current airspeed, and VS mode will let you pick your rate of climb. Um, now, we're going a bit fast here. We probably need to climb um, 
at a, high, a, a slower speed. So I'm going to go for VS mode. So I'm going to go down here, click VS. Okay, now initially uh, the vertical speed here is zero. As I hit the plus button on the keyboard, it will start to go up in 100 feet per minute increments. If I hit it five times, we should now be on a 500 feet per minute climb. And we'll just watch our airspeed. It will start to drop a little bit for the power setting we're at. We could actually increase the power slightly if we wanted. Um, also, I think on now we're on a kind of cruise climb, we can bring the props back to 2000. Um, let's say we want to, yeah, we're still going nice and fast, so let's get that climb rate up to 1000. If you forget how many times you clicked it, just look up here at your data output and you'll see it's at 1000. Now, and let's say we now, um, as, 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 so um, our airspeed is dropping slightly. Let's say we don't want it to drop too low. We think, well, actually, I want to keep it, you know, say 170. I'm not even sure if we're going to reach 170. What you can do is simply then switch to IAS mode. And that way, um, you're not going to go any slower than that. So there's no danger. If you leave it in VS mode and you don't look at your airspeed, you might end up too slow. If you now think, well, actually, I need to climb a bit faster, you can just put some more power in. Your airspeed won't increase, but your vertical speed will, because the autopilot is holding your speed in IAS mode. And that's about it, really. We're on, we're on the SID now. Um, we go to 6,000. We'd level off. Um, if we get further instructions to climb again, we would choose either VS or IAS mode. Um, press Alt Cell and um, let the oh Alt Cell is a good point. You see, I did not select that. So when you change, when you set a new altitude and you and you pick one of the vertical speed modes, make sure you also press IAS. Otherwise, uh, to get out. Sorry, make sure you also also press Alt Cell. Otherwise, the autopilot will just keep climbing. Um, alt Arm appears here when it's armed. And let's just let's just let's put the power up a little bit more. Let's just um, see what happens when we reach 6,000 and you'll see alt arm change back to alt and then we should um, level off again. If you want to you can kind of pull the power back slightly in anticipation of reaching the altitude so if you don't if you didn't want to speed up too much for example. So there we go, we're now at 6,000 and we are still following the SID. So um, that's it for the first uh, the first part of this tutorial. Um, join us in part two when I'm going to um, change location and look at some more of the autopilot modes. Alright, thanks and bye for now.